Welcome to Nashville. I'm David Coulier, your soon-to-be ex-president, and uh, yay! <laughs> oh, yay! Um, couple uh, points here. One, um, uh, you all may notice the Wi-Fi uh, and and their cards. They have the password, so if you need to go onto the internet, um, the password is on these cards here. Um, also note that this uh, meeting is streamed live online, and it will be recorded and also archived online. So all the speeches and the discussion will be uh, there for generations to enjoy. Um, and uh, and so uh, try to be polite. Uh, the FCC doesn't regulate this, so whatever you want to say is okay. Um, the annual convention of delegates is the supreme legislative body of the society. Delegates to this convention are charged with the responsibility of providing direction for the society as it seeks to serve the best interests of its members and all of journalism. In 2011, delegates of the National Convention in New Orleans approved a bylaws change to transform the way SPJ elects members of its national board. In the past, candidates selected by chap were selected by chapter delegates. Now elections are inclusive of all members. One member, one vote. 
However, the society's processes for bylaws amendments and resolutions have not changed. The main duties of the convention delegates are to consider important resolutions and bylaws changes. These are issues that will govern SBJ and help set its agenda for years to come. The bylaws of the society require that the business sessions of the society be run by Robert's Rules of Order. In interpreting those rules both today and during our closing business session, I'll be assisted by our acting parliamentarian, Bob Becker. Bob, please stand and be recognized. He's uh, the, the capital master. As we get started today, I want to review the convention's voting procedures for bylaws, amendments, and resolutions. Voting is done by chapter delegates. Each chapter in good standing with a national organization receives votes based on one vote for each 50 chapter members or a fraction thereof. Each delegate has been given a voting card with a num number of votes assigned to that specific delegate by his or her chapter. If any delegate did not receive a voting card or has a question about their status, please see SBJ staff member Tara Puckett. Uh, Tara, can you, right there, right, she's waving her hand, that's the person to talk to. You'll need your voting card during our next business session on Saturday. Very important to have your voting card ahead of time. Um, now, I'd like to introduce our nominations committee chair, uh, Sonny Alvarado, to give the nominations report. Sonny, there you are. I thought my job was over. <laughs> no. But that's okay. It's all written for you. Oh, good. I don't have to like pull it off my, uh, my phone. Oh, there you go. Okay. First off, uh, let me say how uh, proud I am of the folks who have put their names forward for uh, positions on the uh, SPJ board. Um, Going into this, I you know I had I had the history of, of previous nominations chairs who really struggled to find people to run for office, and uh, I was blessed by the fact that I had a couple of really good people, Mike Koreski, uh, Tara Pucky, and a few others, who uh, really uh, beat the bushes to uh, drum up some candidates, and uh, I'm really happy to say that we have quite a few. Um, at this time, I'm going to present the nominees for the 2014-2015 Board of Directors of the Society of Professional Journalists. You can read their full bios at the SPJ Election Central site, which you can find on the front page of www.spj.org, or a direct link in the EIJ14 app under the Voting Information tab, or at the bottom of the SPJ Opening Business Session in the Schedule View. Okay, we have one candidate for president-elect, and that is Paul Fletcher. Secretary-Treasurer, one candidate, Lynn Walsh. At-large director of the society, four candidates. Manal, Minal Bopaya, Gideon Grudo, Tony Hernandez, and Alex Farquinio. For campus advisor at-large, we have five candidates. Robert Buckman, Dan Katerinici, Jimmy McCollum, Mike Riley, and Lisa Rollins. For campus representative, there are two open positions, and we have seven <coughs> candidates. They are Daniel Axelrod, Dylan Boucher, Ellen Eldridge, Jordan Gaspore, Gaspore, excuse me, Brett Hall. Lane Hilsland, and Lauren Wan. In accordance with SPJ's bylaws, all members of the society in good standing at the date and time balloting begins are eligible to vote for officers and at-large directors. Members will receive an electronic ballot via email at the close of today's business session, the one we're in now. This year, seven regions will hold elections for new directors by electronic ballot as well. You can learn more about these candidates from information posted at elections, Election Central at spj.org or the EIJ 14 app. The names for, of the nominees for these regional director positions are in Region 1, Rebecca Baker and Ernest Owens. In Region 4, 
Patty Gallagher Newberry. In Region 5, Deborah Gibbons. In Region 7, Rob McLean. In Region 8, Eddie Gallagher. In Region 9, Tom Johnson. And Region 11, Matthew Hall, Deb Crow, Crow, excuse me, and Richard Saxton. Do I have a motion to accept the committee's report of nominees? So moved. Moved by Sue Copen Katzif, and who else? Second. Okay, Rebecca Baker. That's it. I think we're going. Thank yeah. you, Sandy. All right. Appreciate you want to have a vote? Uh, let's do a vote. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? It passes. All right. So now we move to, thank you, Sonny. Appreciate your time. Um, candidate speeches. Candidates in contested races are encouraged to give a three-minute speech, along with uh, President-elect candidate Paul Fletcher, as we won't formally hear from him again until his installation at the President's Banquet uh, as President-elect during EIJ 15 in Orlando. Well, when the president. So, uh, so we're going to hear from Paul before then. But we'll kick things off uh, uh, with, with Paul giving his three-minute speech. Paul? Thank you. Oh, and just a, a thing. Uh, for all the people giving speeches, Tara will be back there with a timer, and she will hold the little thing up with 30 seconds left. That's not 30 minutes. And, uh, and uh, then please wrap up uh, so that we can get out on time. Thank you. Yeah, memory serves. They have a pretty fast hook here, too. So. <laughs> I'm Paul Fletcher, and for the past year, I've had the privilege of serving as Secretary Treasurer of SBJ. I'm here today to ask for your support and your vote for President elect. For those of you who don't know my background or haven't looked at the EIJ 14 app yet, I'm the publisher and editor in chief of Virginia Lawyers Weekly, a legal newspaper and website based in Richmond. And I serve two terms as president of the Virginia Pro Chapter. We only get three minutes, they've uh, told us, so I can't really give you a full rundown of what I've done in the past year or even what I would want to do as president elect or president. But I can tell you this afternoon about three things that I want to work on in the coming year if elected. The first of these is advocacy. We've had a great score on this particular topic this year, thanks to our president, Dave Coulier. And I believe that fighting for press freedom is one of the most important missions that this society has. Whether it's standing up for journalists in the Middle East or in Missouri, backing reporters who face a subpoena, demanding the sources of a story and facing jail time, seeking a federal shield law to prevent overreach by federal officials, or gathering 40-some national journalism organizations to send a strong letter to the White House protesting the clampdown on information in government. This morning, the SPJ board unanimously approved the establishment of a permanent legal defense fund that, that will provide funds to fight this good fight. This is a great start, but we must continue the fight. And our voice on behalf of journalists and journalism must be clear and loud. Next is ethics. I was a member of the Ethics Code Revision Committee during the past year. The last time that the code was revised, Bill Clinton was president, and people were doing the Macarena. <laughs> we have put forth a draft code that keeps the core values of previous versions and addresses important issues that have surfaced since 1996. All members of SBJ are going to be able to express their opinion uh, well, on whether it should be adopted, and a question that's going to appear on the electronic ballot that will go out after this meeting. And this Saturday, as Dave noted, you delegates will make the call of whether we adopt it or not. So in the coming year, I'm either going to be working on implementing the new code or taking a look at the, the draft and coming back again in Orlando. Last item is one member, one vote. You already heard how in 2011, we adopted one member, one vote for these elections. I think it's time for us to do it for all SPJ decision making, and here's why. The decisions that are made by delegates of the convention are by delegates chosen to represent chapters. But the membership of our society has been changing somewhat. Currently, 
nearly 43% of the members of the 700, the, the 7,500 members of the society don't belong to a chapter. So they aren't represented as part of this decision making. I'd like to see us work on the bylaws changes that would be necessary to bring those to Orlando to make full one member, one vote available for all SPJ decisions. Again, I ask for your support and your vote. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. And there are chairs up here. If people want to like front in here and have a seat, because uh, this meeting ain't going to be short. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, now, candidates for director at large. Um, uh, candidate uh, Middle Bopaya is unable to join us. Uh, her name will still appear on your electronic ballot. So we'll now hear from candidate for director at large, Gideon Grudo. Paul just touched on a lot of really important things that are that are facing SPJ, uh, but there's also other less journalistic endeavors that we need to take as an organization, and that's increasing membership. Uh, and there's a thousand ways to do that successfully, and one of them is immersive programming. Um, I've seen, I've seen how programs where uh, journalists come and actually do something cause them to walk away and want to join SPJ and want to get involved and want to do more. I've Last weekend I came back from uh, Florida where I used to be VP. Currently I'm in DC, I'm on the pro chapter. I came back because I was doing well right for food uh, for the fifth year in a row. I've done one night stand, I've done First Amendment free food festivals around the country. I've run all on paper, I've run zombie stories, I've run F words with friends, I've run death race, ethics hold'em, and the unethical press. Each one of those is an SPJ program that got people doing things with their hands, uh, thinking about journalism, and actually working to, uh, to practice it, instead of sitting and maybe listening to someone uh, lecture on it, which is another one of those other successful ways. I want to take this to the rest of the country. I know that it's possible because I've done it in cities that I don't live in. Uh, and that's all I'm going to bore you with today. On the, on the journalist side, uh, I've been a freelancer and a reporter. I've been an editor. I've been laid off. I've been offered a job that I couldn't afford to take. I've been offered a job that took me across the country to a different state. Uh, and I think that puts me in a position where I can relate and be on par and on level with a lot of SPJ's membership. And that's it. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you, Gideon. Um, another candidate for director at large, Tony Hernandez. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tony Hernandez. I'm a city government reporter with the uh, Knoxville News Sentinel. Uh, I'm also the current uh, Region 12 director representing members in here in Tennessee, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Arkansas. Uh, I'm a product of the Scripps Leadership Program and also the Diversity Fellowship. Okay, so there's a, there's a lot of great stuff that SBJ does. Uh, and I'm sure you can ask any board member, any, uh, you can ask Dave. Uh, I'm not going to regurgitate a lot of this stuff. I want to spend my time talking uh, about small chapters. Uh, I've been the Region 12 director now two years. And, uh, you know, small chapters is classified as 75 members or, or, or less. And, um, all of my chapters in Region 12 are, are classified as small. Uh, ballpark, there's about 50 small chapters in the country, um, and that's about out of 150. 
uh, here in Region 12, I've seen some uh, really awesome programming and traditions carried out by diehard SVJ members. But I've also seen some significant challenges and burdens placed on a small number of leaders who feel the pressure of keeping the status quo. We have local board leaders that are serving in their capacity for years and getting burned out. And we lack a pool of volunteers to step up and take their place. As an at-large director, my personal mission would be to uh, take a look at small chapters throughout the country and speak with their leaders and ask questions. Are the mandatory three programs per year too much for you guys? Would you consider joint programming uh, with other chapters in your state to ease up that burden of, of putting together a worthwhile program? The Arkansas chapters here, uh, there's two pro chapters, are actually looking into that very idea of joint programming. Uh, Today at the board meeting, uh, Tara and Joe talked about a new effort to encourage states that don't have any chapters uh, to put together programs, and I think that's an awesome step that I would, I would love to encourage. Uh, getting elected as an at-large member uh, would free up some time for me to carry this out. Uh, sorry, I lost my spot. Uh, by the end of the term, I pledge to have uh, a comprehensive report or a study that I hope would show nationwide trends of successes and challenges facing small chapters. What good would that do? Well, the National Board and Joe are in the process of uh, looking at the long-range vision of, of SBJ, not only just 5, 10 years, but 20, 50, 100 years. Um, and I think this report and this kind of comprehensive look at the boots on the ground, small chapters would help with that long-term vision. So thank you for your consideration. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to find me. You can find my email on uh, the sbjregion12.com um, if you want to reach out to me. And uh, I appreciate your consideration. Thank you, Tony. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and see if we can scooch in uh, into the sides there, because there's still a bunch of people need to sit down and still have seats open. So if you can, just kind of scooch in. Y'all know you standing up there, if you, unless you enjoy that sort of thing. Um, and uh, while we're doing that, uh, next we're going to hear from Alex Tarquinio. Also a candidate for director of life. Alex? Thank you. Thank you. Lots of seats there. Good afternoon. I'm Alex Tarquinio, and I'm running to be your at-large director. I'll be floating some ideas to bolster membership and support chapters. There are a few that would have financial implications, and of course those would require a study and debate. I hope that debate begins as soon as we walk out the door. Together, let's make this conference a crucible of ideas. Then, let's put the best of them into action. We're all aware of the forces roiling our profession and the pressures they have put on keeping up our membership. Despite all of our efforts, it has fallen to 7,500. Make no mistake, this trend must be reversed. After all, without members, where's our credibility? How can our advocacy resonate nationwide? So <laughs> how do we boost membership and support chapters? To begin with, we have to face the fact that our annual dues are too high for many journalists, especially freelancers and young professionals. One step has already been taken in the right direction, giving a promotional rate to recent graduates, and the board is now going to look and possibly extending that. We should also consider extending this promotional rate to all newly joining members. Signing up more first-time SPJ members is a worthy goal that also has the power to infuse chapters with new blood. Fortunately, our society at the national level is financially sound. Let's make that the case for chapters large and small. From my experience as president of the New York Deadline Club and at many other chapters, it's the contest that are the proven fundraisers. SPJ should facilitate local contests in every way possible. 
In the same vein, in our region, we have a program to assist new chapter formation by providing seed money. Perhaps Nashville could do likewise. We should examine the demands we put on chapter leaders who spend much of their time interacting with national by filling out reports. Perhaps we could have a long and short form like the IRS. Let's look at any requirements that chapters are having trouble meeting. Because in the rare event when one of them folds, it's as if a star goes out in the SPJ universe. We might want to consider the minimum of 20 members, which is set years ago when the society was significantly larger. If some chapters are struggling to meet these benchmarks, perhaps the fault rests not in our members, but in obsolete rules. Now I'll tell you where I stand on some of the known issues. First, appointing committee chairs. Some of you may remember when I lobbied for this change back in 2009. So I was pleased to see incoming President Dana News present her committee chairs to this morning's board meeting. Then there's the question of the name change. SPJ certainly needs to evolve, but I'm not convinced that a new name will be the trick. And should one member, one vote be available for all important decision making? Absolutely. Finally, the public needs and deserves courageous journalists and the institutions like ours that will stand behind them. So our advocacy is as crucial as ever. And it will have more teeth if we have strong chapters and rising membership. I believe these are goals where I can make a difference as one of your at-large directors. If you agree, then I humbly ask for the vote. Thank you. We're now here from our candidates for campus advisor at large. Uh, first up, Jimmy McCollum. Jimmy? No? Sir. Oh, there you are. Okay. Well, first of all, welcome to my hometown. Great to have everybody here in Nashville. I'm Jimmy McCollum. I teach journalism at Lipscomb University here in Nashville. Also, direct the Tennessee High School Press Association, which is based at Lipscomb. I'm honored to serve SPJ at the national and regional and local level. Nationally, I'm on the Journalism Education Committee. Uh, we have uh, just we are in the process of finishing our book on high school education. Uh, at the regional le uh, regional level, I've had the opportunity to uh, help organize a spring workshop on our campus. And at the local level, I and both the faculty advisor at Lipscomb University and a member of the board of directors of the Middle Tennessee Pro Chapter. Uh, I love getting our students involved and engaged at all three of those levels, uh, bringing students to the national every year, the regional every spring. Um, my, one of my students is the conference photographer this week. Uh, I've enjoyed having those great moments with students of uh, letting them hear Walter Cronkite uh, have photo ops with Woodward and Bernstein and, and others throughout the same years. I'm honored to be considered as a uh, campus advisor. Uh, have a great week here in Nashville, and y'all come back. Thank you. Now you'll hear from Mike Riley. Okay, glass record video. Have a look. Um, thanks for the introduction, Dave. And the last time somebody handed me a microphone and told me I had three minutes of drunken in a karaoke bar. Uh, that's just two hours ago, by the way. <laughs> I think I'm kidding. Okay. All right, here we go. Um, I am recording you right now. Okay, Glass? Record a video. Now we're recording. Okay, we'll hit this little button here so we can record longer than 12 seconds. Um, my name is Mike Riley. Um, I know many of you in the room uh, through my interactions with SPJ over the years. Um, I founded the website Journal's Toolbox, which is housed at SPJ, and I update it uh, 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 twice a week uh, and tweet to a little uh, Twitter account called at Journal Toolbox. So if you're not following, make sure you follow. Um, I also interact with many of you through our SPJ to Paul chapter. I um, was a founding advisor for that chapter. Um, I've recruited more than 180 students. Uh, all but two are under the age of 25, and I think that's an important thing about SPJ is that we're recruiting young members. I know a couple people have mentioned it earlier. Um, we have to have very innovative programming, things that interest them, and work digital into that. Um, I do that with my teaching. I teach 
online journals, mobile reporting, and data journalism at Nepal. Uh, and I try to incorporate all those things, not just into the classes and the things I teach there, uh, but also into what I do with SPJ. So almost everything we do with S our SPJ chapter involves some type of technology in it as well. Um, we have a student uh, website, the SPJ ONA Nepal website. We're also going to a chapter. We want to get budgeted for both as if I combine the two chapters uh, together. I think Georgia does that, maybe a, a couple of other schools. Um, what I bring to the table is the ability to recruit young people to our organization uh, and with programming. Um, my roots are in newspaper journalism. Um, I was a reporter at the LA Times for seven years. Uh, I was one of the founding editors of ChicagoTribune.com, uh, and also worked at WashingtonPost.com for a little over a year. Um, so I'm an early adopter of web technology and kind of grew with the industry. So I think that's something I'm bringing to the table as well, is understanding technology, the ethics concerns with it, uh, with drones, uh, you know, and you know, eventually this is going to, the government's going to try and moderate this as well. Just wait and see, they've already done so with, with uh, uh, drones. Um, so really, those are the two big things I bring to the table. I think campus advisor at large is uh, a good role uh, to do so. Um, I'll hang out in the back of the room if you have any questions later, and uh, I'll also let you play with class if you want to play around with it. So thanks for your time, and according to this, I'm at 2 minutes and 15 seconds, so thank you. <laughs> uh, karaoke later. Okay. Uh, next up, we have uh, Lisa Rocks. Good afternoon, fellow colleagues, student journalists, and what I like to call you, my friends. Um, I've been involved with SPJ for nearly 30 years, but you shouldn't do the math because that means I'm really old. <laughs> A lot older than I look, I think. Um, I'm excited to be with you here today. I'm always excited to come to SPJ events. This is also I stand before you today as a candidate for faculty advisor at large. I thought this category needed some estrogen injected into it. So I'm your, your lone ovum running for office. Um, I first started serving with SPJ as an undergrad at the University of North Texas, where I was the vice president of our student chapter there. That was in 1987. Again, don't do the math. Um, but that shows you that SPJ matters to me, and it's been important. It's been good to me, and I hope I've been good to SPJ over the years. Um, as a journalism educator, it's my great desire to continue my involvement with SPJ by serving as faculty advisor at large for the National Board for several reasons. But my driving motivation is because I found SPJ so rewarding, first as a student, then as a print newsroom reporter and editor, then as a broadcast reporter, and for the past 18 years as a journalism professor. Um, obviously, I have stayed involved and encouraged my students to be involved over the years. I have served on ground as a faculty advisor at large for Middle Tennessee State University, which is just down the road. If you guys are familiar with that, it's in Murfreesboro. I revitalized that chapter and served as a faculty advisor. Nationally, I've also served as a Region 12 director, which as one of our colleagues mentioned, he is currently the director of Tennessee, Mississippi, and a little bit of some other states in the eastern time zone. Beyond that, I took a job in Oklahoma in 2010 to serve as a chair of a, a communication journalism program. It was at Langston University, which is an historically black college, and I founded an SPJ chapter there and served as a faculty advisor. Then I left Langston University to go online. I had an opportunity to be a founding full-time online faculty member at Ashford. And I'm excited to say that as of this year, I founded the first online chapter of SPJ. So we've made Ashford University history and SPJ history. That role has a lot of challenges because it's online, but it's nothing that we can't accomplish. We have 16 members and we have 50 some odd journalism majors. And I think this past background as a faculty advisor at large, as well as a Region 12 director, and also as a student rep at large on the National Board, have prepared me to bridge the needs between our student journalists and what our professional society does. And I hope to serve as your next faculty advisor at large, and I thank you for considering me. If you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, next up is Robert Buckman. Robert's didn't. Okay. All right. Then we'll go to the student representative candidates. Remember, there are two open seats for this position. And so the first candidate we'll hear from is Daniel Axelrod. Hey, hey, hey. My name is Dan Axelrod, and uh, I'm running for an SPJ seat to represent college journalists. I was uh, a full-time newspaper reporter for seven years, and uh, I'm doing a journalism doctorate at the University of Florida because the only thing I wanted to do more than be a reporter was teach people how to be reporters. So that's where I'm at. Uh, SPJ-wise, uh, I'm a past president of the Keystone Pro chapter, which I'm proud to say uh, was named one of the best chapters in the country back in 2010 when I ran it. And uh, I'm the former vice chairman of the Digital Media Committee. So um, I spent a good part of my car ride here uh, thinking about what I can do for SPJ. And um, I found my thoughts drifting to a, a conversation that I had with uh, James Foley uh, when we were attending a, a wedding of a mutual friend back in uh, the summer of 2011. Uh, it was the wee hours, and we were at a post-wedding party in a, a small, dimly lit neighborhood tavern in one of those pretty little main towns that makes you just want to pick up and move there. And uh, <clears throat> our mutual friend, the groom, Jeremy, introduced James to me as the global post reporter who had just been released after spending 44 days in captivity in Libya. This was, uh, as I said, in, in the summer of 2011. Uh, Muammar Gaddafi's men had detained him and a photographer who uh, actually ended up being killed in that same attack. Uh, and James had just gotten back to the U.S. Uh, I told James how much I appreciated the foreign reporting that he'd done for Global Post and I asked him what his plans were after his release. Uh, I just assumed he wasn't going to be doing any more foreign reporting, uh, or at least not anytime soon. So I also asked him if he was going to be switching to covering a, a domestic beat. And I'll never forget, he said, no, I'm going right back out there. And I was stunned. I mean, I, I, at, at that point, I should probably add that we were all pretty drunk. Uh, in all honesty, I, I might have been in an especially happy state of mind. I mean, the, the entire wedding party was flying pretty high. Uh, well, I, I clapped him on the shoulder and I said, uh, I think you've had a few too many beers. Uh, so <clears throat> he looked at me and his eyes grew serious and he said, no, i got to go back out there. This is our job. This is what we do as reporters. And uh, I remember he said something similar to, to a magazine about you know, being witness bearers. And sure enough, he was back out there uh, just a few months later and he was actually at the scene when Gaddafi was captured in November of 20. Uh, excuse me, in October of 2011. Uh, of course, a year later, he was captured, and we all know what happened recently. He was in captivity for nearly two years. Um, I can't say that I frequently thought about James for all that time, but you know, in recent days, his name was all over the news, and I, I started thinking about how he embodied journalism's prime objectives to facilitate democracy to uh, equip individuals with the information necessary to make decisions that enhance their lives. And, okay, well, uh, what I was going to say in conclusion was that um, when it comes to promoting those goals, the society is foremost in that. And the society is full of similar true believers. And that's why I want to be on the board with the ultimate set of true believers. All right. Um, next up, uh, Dylan uh, Boucher. Not sure how that's Boucher. Plane was delayed. Ah, plane was delayed. Oh, that's unfortunate. 
Okay, uh, so then we'll hear from Ellen Elbridge. My name is Ellen Elbridge, and I am running for one of these kind of representative, two representative spots. Thank you. The first time I met our president, he was dressed up like a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I am a current senior. I've been a senior for about two years now. This is my second degree. I decided to change my major after graduating. And when I joined SPJ in 2013, I had also joined the Golden Key Honor Society. And I went to maybe one meeting for the Golden Key Honor Society meeting. And obviously with SPGA, I became much more involved. As president, I was able to increase our membership to the highest number of members that I think our chapter had ever had. And part of that had to do with getting involved with the programs, like the Interviewing the Undead program in New Orleans. I was able to convince a group of students to come with me to New Orleans to interview zombies. Because who doesn't want to do that? And I think, I think that that's part of the key when we talk about engaging new members and increasing interest in, in the society. I, I'll tell you the truth. When I joined SPJ, I did so because there was an opportunity to become president. I hadn't heard of it, but I was a journalism major. And I thought, well, that sounds perfect for me. That's going to look great on my resume. So I went ahead and I, and I did it. And, you know, and I wasn't a slacker. I intended to do the best job that I was capable of doing. So I, I rallied troops. I tried to get students interested. And, and slowly but surely, it's been dawning on me more and more that this isn't just about getting a job. And I've landed one already before I graduate, so I'm good there. Getting involved with SBJ means networking with the people who care about the industry that I've worked so hard and spent so much money becoming involved with. And I think that as a student representative, I can bring to the table the experience of somebody who's a little bit older who can kind of look back on all the mistakes I had made. And I can still see with the perspective of a current student what is going to interest people. It's, you know, I mean, rewriting the code of ethics is extremely important, and these are important matters that we stand for, but students are going to be much more interested in programming. I, along with two other candidates for student representative, was at the Florida program Will Write for Food this weekend. Three of us, three out of the seven, were at this program. So if I'm elected student representative, in addition to telling everyone everywhere where I go how important it is to get involved and stay involved to get a job, I'm also going to encourage people to get involved with these national programs and to do the best that they can do. So I ask for your vote, and thank you very much for listening to me. Next up, uh, Jordan, and I'm going to get this wrong, Gasparay. Gas! You said that earlier. Gasparay. Gasparay. Is that Irish? <laughs> 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 no? It's supposed to be German and French. It's two different last names. There you but go. let's work it while I'm way too short. Hi. So I, too, attended Zombie Stories and Will Write for Food. And I actually met Ellen at Zombie Stories. And a great program. Both are great programs. And programming is one of my platforms, if you will, as well. Um, also, bridging the gap between professional journalists and student journalists, both college and high school. When I was in high school, I was lucky enough to have mentors from the San Antonio Express News. They offer a program called the Teen Team, and where they invite high school journalists to apply, and once a month you can go to the newsroom. We sat in a really nice board meeting um, with a really nice big wooden table, which they don't really have anymore. It was very old school journalism. and. It just amazes me now, though, how few programs exist for high school journalists to connect with professional journalists. And that's one of the things I would like to, to see college chapters do, get together with the high school journalism department in their town. I'm from San Marcos, Texas, with Texas State University. We have San Marcos High School down the road. And it would be great to have our chapter, which, by the way, just won Region 8 Chapter of the Year, so for 
those in Texas who do not know that and are watching this, that great. I am president of that chapter where I was last year. We'll be holding elections shortly for this year's um, president and uh, other officer positions. But it would be great to see my chapter and its members go to San Marcos High School, go to the yearbook department, go to their newspaper, and uh, if anything, interact. Just purely interact and talk with those high school students. So I'm going to ask everyone here to turn to the person to their left. And what I want you to do is ask that person why they decided to join SPJ. And if you would as well, that response to tweet it out. So the person you would ask, you would tweet their response out and vice versa. So the remainder of my time, I would like to see you all interact with each other and hopefully make a new friend. And hopefully you're sitting next to a student if you're a professional. So if you would, please do that now. Yes, that's why I joined. Yes. And her name is Sue Wormsley, and I haven't talked to her in a number of years, so I wonder where she is now. Yes. What did you join? College. And I interviewed you, too. You used to blood on me, which is good. Oh, you did well there. I was very pleased. All right. And I do appreciate Jordan. She, uh, I did not throw blood on her in New Orleans. I did not. Um, you know, it's posted somewhere on social media. You'll have to look it up. Um, Brett Hall will be speaking next. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brett Hall, and I'm hoping that I'm running for a student representative position on the national board. I am currently on the national board. I was lucky enough to be chosen by the board to fill an interim position for the last month and a half. And um, I can already say it's been a blast because uh, when I think of something, when I think of SPJ, there's one slogan that somebody else, if you're in the Virginia area or West Virginia area, may recognize. Has anyone ever heard the Charlestown Races and Slots, West Virginia, Wild and Wonderful? <laughs> Thank you, Andy. <Anna. laughs> um, that's what I think of when I think of SPJ. And Wild and Wonderful only in the good way. Um, wild about making sure that our First Amendment right is protected while our government continues to try to take it away. And I think that being educated in that in our schools and in our colleges and universities is one of the most important things we can do right now. Um, I, this is my third year in the Society of Professional Journalists. Um, I was the first came in and was elected treasurer of the University of Maryland chapter, then went to president. Um, as president, I had over 30 members join, which was very big for our chapter at the time. Um, it was going through a little law, and we got it back going. Um, we today were uh, honored with, for the second year in a row, uh, Chapter of the Year for Region 2, which I'm very proud of. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I believe that there's still a lot of work to be done. I was just uh, telling someone today, um, one of the James, I was thinking when uh, one of the James Madison advisors uh, came to our Region 2 meeting that the only time I ever got to speak with James Madison uh, fellow students was at the conference, and that's not right. One of the things I think we should do an SBJ um, is form a community that has college campus conference calls or maybe Skype to spread and share ideas more often. Because I hardly ever talk. I mean, Towson University is very close to our school, and I never talked to that SBJ chapter. Never did. Uh, and I think there's time for change for that. I believe you should elect me as your student representative for the fact that I have a proven um, record of success. Um, I once asked a freshman last year why she thinks. Um, so many people joined, and um, I was very humbled by the response because she says, you seem so passionate, yet relaxed. Didn't know if that was a complimentary point, but um, still it was a big compliment for me. And it's philosophy I've always tried to live by is that if I can make one person's day, my job is done. Um, now, it doesn't mean if you elect me to the, the board that I'll personally make your day every day, but um, I hope we can work together to make SBJ a better organization for those that are going to be the future of the organization. So don't fret, vote Brett, and thank you very much. I 
Mr. Parliamentary, can we add seven more student positions on the board? Can we do that? Because I think they should all be elected. Next, next year, you. Oh, next bylaws year. Bylaws change next year. All right. Um, next up, Lauren Watt. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Lauren Wan. I'm from Lindenwood University, and I'm a junior this year. When you think of SPJ, what do you think of? Is it the Code of Ethics and the Sigma Delta Chi Foundation, or the Quill Magazine and the multiple resources SPJ has to offer? From FOIA committees to Generation J, SPJ has been an industry leader for more than 100 years. As a young student, I recognize this organization's commitment to producing the best journalists possible. As a part of SPJ's mission statement, to inspire successive generations of talented individuals to become dedicated journalists, I found this section to be the hook, line, and sinker for journalism students. Across America, there are various student chapters, pro chapters, and SPJ communities that provide a place of belonging. This organization allows journalists of all ages to come together to further one another for, to further one's knowledge. By hosting conventions, journalism workshops, and locally pairing up chapters, we remind and inspire each other to encourage and maintain the rights under the First Amendment. SPJ provides the general public timely and accurate information, as well as creating a proactive environment for journalists to work. I feel that is my mission to ensure that all journalists find their niche and then turn that passion into inspiration for other journalists to chase and succeed in their dreams. At different points in our lives, we find ourselves being unsure of a direction or pathway to take. The beauty of journalism is that it is a free outlet for many individuals to voice their opinions, ideas, or newsworthy information. As journalists, we invented thinking outside of the box. I believe that SPJ is the place to inform and inspire journalists to find their career and hobby outlets. As an organization, we can help others find what they are truly passionate about and then turn that passion into a lifelong commitment to become dedicated journalists. Through SBJ, I've been able to sharpen my print skills, broadcast personality, and online news blogging. At my university, I write for our student newspaper, anchor at our HD television station, in addition to being a sports reporter on a radio station. Outside of school, I work for a local newspaper company and a tri-state television uh, station inside the Midwest. As a Midwest girl and coming from the show me state, I hope to show SPJ what the students want and let them be heard on the national level. Please vote for me, Lauren Wan, to be your 2014 student campus representative. Thank you. Unfortunately, uh, Lane Hillsland, uh, Hillsland was unable to join us, but uh, uh, folks who couldn't show up will still appear on your ballot. Uh, that you'll receive at the close of this meeting. Um, moving onward, those are our uh, people. Now we're going to talk a little bit about resolutions, important information regarding those. Uh, your delegate information sheet contains information about submitting resolutions for consideration by the convention. Our res resolutions committee chair is Sunny Alvarado. You heard from him earlier. If you or your chapter has resolutions for consideration that have not already been submitted to Sunny, then please do so. Uh, send them as a Word document attachment to spjsunny at gmail.com. That's spjsunny, S-O-N-N-Y, at gmail.com. Or submit to the EIJ registration desk before noon tomorrow. So noon tomorrow is the deadline for resolutions. The resolutions proposals will be available Saturday morning after 10 a.m., Delegates should stop by the EIJ registration desk to pick up a copy prior to voting during the business session Saturday afternoon. So that's all very important. And um, also regarding that, I hope all the delegates are able to attend the two sessions tomorrow uh, that are informational. One is about the proposed uh, code of ethics revision. Uh, uh, show up for that your chance to ask questions of the committee members, uh, uh, your chance to voice your concerns, uh, talk about it. Um, 
That way we can speed through the business meeting a lot faster come Saturday. So I really encourage you to show up for that session. And the other one is the session on the proposed name change resolution that you'll no doubt have before you as well. Again, a chance to uh, come and talk about pros and cons of that. So uh, I think those are two really important things to go to. Uh, all right, chapter of the year awards. Before we adjourn, I'd like to take a moment to present chapter of the year awards. Each year, SPJ recognizes two professional chapters, one large and one small, for a year of outstanding work. This year, Cincinnati Pro was selected as SPJ's small chapter of the year. The chapter had a year of great growth through its events and hosted multiple well-attended gatherings, such as journalism cabaret, a night to a, a, a session on freedom of information and working with public information officers. The chapter found even more success through its outreach to journalism students in the area by staging an internship program for more than 40 students, creating a scholarship fund, and conducting a lunch with the pro session. The chapter's great work just shows that great work can be done on behalf of journalism no matter the size of the group. Uh, can a representative of Cincinnati Pro please come up to accept the award? There we go. Thank you. Thank you very much. We really, really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Good job. What a surprise. Well, you guys earned it. Thank you. Yeah. In the large chapter category, the 2014 chapter of the year is the pro. The chapter has gone above and beyond to do work in the name of journalism, reaching out to other journalism organizations to produce quality programming. Their partnership with the National Association of Hispanic Journalists, for example, led to a day-long event with multiple workshops that drew a large number of journalists from around the state. Florida Pros continued their innovative programming of years past, hosting zombie workshops, co-producing print and information workshops, and continually maintaining a job bank for local journalists. Um, could someone from the Florida Pro chapter please come up to accept the award? Thank you, thank you. Um, I'd also like to take a moment to recognize other outstanding chapters, though they were not selected as chapter of the year. Their efforts are really top notch and should not go unnoticed. Minnesota Pro, Press Club of Yeah. Go Minnesota. Minnesota. Press Club of Long Island. DC Pro. DC Pro. Utah Pro. And East Tennessee Pro. They were, they were among a long list of chapters that went above and beyond to improve and protect journals. So congratulations again to all our chapters on a fantastic year. To our runners-up, please see uh, Tara Pucky at the close of the meeting to pick up your certificates. So all those chapters, I just need to go see Tara, please, because uh, you also, uh, also did a great job. Um, now that you have heard about the business items for consideration during this convention, unless there are other business items, introductions that should come before this opening session, we're going to adjourn until Saturday afternoon. A uh, glance at the program will show that there are great things in store for the conference. The planning committee and the staffs of SPJ and RTD may have worked incredibly hard to bring you training and networking opportunities, so be sure to take advantage of them. You know, in particular, um, make sure uh, to show up for the Freedom Scenes gathering that's going to take place this afternoon. Ken Paulson, I've, I haven't seen it, but I've heard it's amazing and uh, hopefully inspirational because, you know, that's what SBJ is about. It's kind of like going to church. You know, we show up and we get rejuvenated. And, um, and I think that's going to be a great gathering. As well as the opening reception tonight downtown. And there'll be shuttles available right outside this door here uh, upstairs that will take you downtown for free. Uh, so make sure to make it to the opening reception. Um, question in back? They, I think they start at 6, 
6 o'clock, 6 till like 7, 7.30. And, and they'll be running all night. So uh, make sure to have fun. Because, you know, this is about... This is about a cause, a mission. It's, it's why we went into this business, and it's time to celebrate that. Um, one little note, the board this morning approved an endowed advocacy fund um, that Paul Fletcher mentioned, and um, if any of you want to give toward it, uh, email me, sbjdave at yahoo.com. Email me, pledge something, pledge something in your will. You know, you youngins, I mean, I did, because I'm not going to need it when I'm dead. So, you know, 25 grand, put it in your will. Uh, 100 grand or a percentage of, of your assets, email me with what you pledge to the cause uh, so that we can build a war chest to fight for freedom forever. I mean, that's what this is all about. Because, of course, if we don't, nobody else will. So, uh, as a reminder, members in good standing will receive an electronic ballot via email at the close of this meeting. Should you have questions about the election process or your ballot, please see Tara Fucky uh, or email elections at the SPJ.org. Again, that's elections at SPJ.org. Or call uh, phone number. You know, but you're probably not going to write it down. Um, I'll give it out. 317-920-4784. Or just email elections at svj.org or CTER. That's easier. Also, delegates should plan on attending two sessions that are important to the society. I mentioned them. That ethics code one is 9.30 to 10.30 tomorrow. Right of Studios, Ryman Studios M on the lower level. 9.30 to 10.30 in the morning. That's the ethics one. Please show up. Uh, the name change one is 1 to 2 p.m. tomorrow. So if you want to hear Michael Koretsky uh, give his kick. Huh? Saturday. Oh, I'm sorry. Saturday. No, you're right. Oh. <laughs> yeah, show up tomorrow. <laughs> and, uh, and have a... I joke because, of course, uh, I'm in favor of it. So, you know, one of the few. Um, and one of the few who agree with Michael Kresge uh, on something. So, um, so anyway, uh, yeah, but the, the, the code one is tomorrow, right, uh, Tara? 9.30 to 10.30 in the morning tomorrow. The name change one is 1 to 2 p.m. Saturday. Um, Again, please plan on attending the sessions because they're going to help make our business meeting Saturday go faster. We have a lot on the agenda. Um, I'm guessing people are going to have a, a few things to say, and uh, we want to do it in a way that allows a variety of voices to be heard. Uh, finally, candidates and contested regional director elections have the opportunity to speak directly following today's meeting in this room. So this includes regions 1 and 11. Please feel free to stick around and hear the candidates uh, talk for those two regions. Uh, that concludes our business in this opening business section. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Go forth and have fun.
we've made in the last two years. Uh, we've had five campus champa chapters launch since 2012, including one at Penn State, which is one of the biggest and most prestigious journalism programs in the country. We now, SPJ now has a presence at Penn State. Uh, we have two more student chapters on the way, one in Maine and uh, one is being reactivated at Wilkes in Pennsylvania. Um, I've really tried to work with the student and professional chapters on events, on programming, on membership. Uh, I've tried to make myself as accessible as possible, answering calls, answering emails uh, all the time. I've done steps to try to open communications with chapter leaders and student advisors, um, monthly emails, uh, so on and so forth, to try to get the lines of communication open and share ideas. Um, I like to think that I would be a great regional director another time because I just, I love SPJ. I've been part of this organization for 14 years. I joined in 2000 and I've been a member of the Deadline Club uh, since 2004, been uh, chapter president, and I've just uh, really dedicated a lot of time and effort to this organization because I believe in it. I believe in what SPJ stands for. I believe in what it can do and what it has done. And I think that um, it can just keep going forward uh, to this. I have a proven track record of leadership. Um, there's been two sold out regional conferences since I've been regional director, uh, one in New Jersey and one in New England. Um, I'm a member of the National Awards Committee and have been for several years, and I was honored to get the Howard Dubin Award uh, as Outstanding Professional Member back in 2010-2011. I know the job. I've done it for two years, uh, working with professional and student chapter leaders. Uh, I would very much love to continue to do so, and I believe I can be a great representative for the region. I grew up in Pennsylvania, and I've worked in New Jersey, New England, and now New York. Um, as a woman and as a managing editor, I believe I can be a role model for students and, uh, and a mentor uh, for everyone. So I would really appreciate your support. Thank you for your time. For the record, I don't like filling in for days for stuff like this. Um, the second candidate for Region 1 Director is Ernest Owens. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ernest Owens. I was originally from Chicago, Illinois, but I moved to the East Coast a couple of years ago. Um, I grew up in living in Philadelphia. I went to the University of Pennsylvania. I do freelance journalism. I do contributing write for USA Today and Huffington Post. And I think that one thing that I really bring to this position that is needed for, I think, all of SPJ in the future is being to revitalize um, the membership. I think that that's one of the most crucial um, aspects. I think we have a lot of great educated members. Um, the person I'm going against for this position is very qualified and very intelligent, but I think that the energy and the excitement that needs to really, you know, diversify membership, really enable people to feel like they can be apart from all different types of levels is crucial, I think, to making sure that, you know, we can be able to survive. One thing is, is that I am from Philadelphia. I attended the University of Pennsylvania, and we don't we don't have a chapter. We don't even really have much of a strong chapter or presence in Philadelphia currently right now. That is something that I really think that's important to Regional One because Philadelphia is a really great city um, that's a park, and we have New York, we have Jersey, but I think that 
there are a lot of Philadelphia journalists that are interested, just like myself, coming from um, the collegiate level that don't know where to start. And I think that one of the things that I can bring to the table is bringing in those younger people to the table. Um, I think that it's very important, too, to also look at bringing in a different wave of journalists, because right now we have you know, a big emphasis on press, and we have people that have been in the business for years, but what about other people that start getting to start? And what really drove me to being a part of SPJ was the fact that a journalist like myself, who did not have a long lineage or a um, group of people that taught me from the beginning, to be come here and to see many people mentor me, I think that deserves to be given across the board. And I think we need to really start in the classroom, and I think that we really need to start in areas that do, do not get that type of attention. And I think that for myself, what I really can guarantee through my levels of different professions and work is not just so much of the prestigious and prizes, but so much of an interest and a sure, sheer determination and passion to really focus on diversifying our group. I'm young, I'm gay, I'm black. I come from different backgrounds and different places, and I've traveled all across this country. Um, I was born in Chicago, grew up in Houston, Texas. Um, I'm a member also of RTDNA. I'm also part of the Online News Association. I've also won awards across from Tribeca all the way to um, Columbia Press Association. So it's not so much to me about what kind of accolades and what kind of merit I've had, but just really trying to show my interest in reaching out to different type of people. Because journalism in, has the ability to either decline or to rise, and it really determines not so much of you know, what's being done in the newsroom, but who's going to be there. And I really want to emphasize that diversifying membership and really looking for different types of people to help strengthen the region would be very essential. And that's why I think that voting for me, Ernest Thomas, for Regional One Director, would be a really strong decision for the future. Thank you. Okay, the other contested regional election uh, is Region 11. So, Matt Hall. Oh, did you want me, Matthew or Matt? That is fine. Great. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, why me? I'm going to give you five reasons. First, I know the West, so I'm a good choice for Region 11. My parents got married on the Berkeley Pier. I've lived in San Diego for 15 years. My wife has lived there her whole life. Our daughter's now two. I've traveled extensively throughout California, Arizona, Nevada, and Hawaii, the states that make up Region 11. Second, I know journalism. I've won awards for nearly every type. Investigative, breaking news, feature stories, criticism, column writing, blogging. Third, I know social media. I manage it for one of the West's largest and oldest media companies, UT San Diego. I'm pretty much plugged into it at all waking hours, much to my wife's dismay. Although my kids run when my phone rings and they say, Daddy, it's Twitter calling. <laughs> I'm closing in on 7,000 followers on Twitter. One example of my senses of urgency and timeliness, my belief in conversation and community building. Using Twitter for news and networking is a big way to grow SBJ. I can do that. Fourth, I care deeply about training, mentoring, and supporting young journalists. Heck, all journalists. To that end, I talk frequently to San Diego journalism classes, and as a member and president of the San Diego SBJ chapter, I've moderated panels on the Occupy movement, press badges, and California's devastating wildfires, just to name a few. My goal is always to bring together journalists, officials, sources, and members of the public to improve communication access, and maybe most importantly, the value and vision of journalism. San Diego SBJ prides itself on the panels we put on. Our next two will be on data, journalism, and police cameras. Another recent one was focused on email encryption tools. This is the future, you guys, digital journalism, and I'm at the forefront of it. I want to bring this energy and emphasis on education, ethics, and excellence to regional and national SBJ efforts. I want us to be forward thinking. Fifth and finally, I want journalism to remain vital, relevant, protected. The night that journalists from the Washington Post and Huffington Post were arrested in Ferguson, Missouri, I was the first person on the National SBJ board to email the group and propose we issue a statement condemning that action. Early the next morning, we did just that. Uh, I'd like to continue being that sort of leader in Region 11, where I'm the incumbent, and nationally for SBJ. 
So in closing, look to the future, look to a quick thinker and a fighter for the First Amendment, look to me. I'm here to listen and lead and support you. I'd appreciate your vote. Thanks. Uh, is it Deb Kroll or Kroll? Kroll. Deb Kroll. Thank you. Chuck Moose. That's leaning for how you doing. Hi, I'm Deborah Kroll, and I'm asking for your vote for Region 11 Director. But I just want to state for the record that either one of us would make a great director. Um, and pretty much for the same reasons. But I have to say I trump Matt on the on the residency thing because my tribe's been living in California for the last 10,000 years. So, but um, the thing is, is that that Region 11 has has a lot of diverse issues. We have 187 tribes plus the Native Hawaiians plus the Pacific Islanders. Access to public information is a huge problem. I can help with that. We have a a lot of of issues ranging from water use, environmental issues, public access, um, public access to lands. Yes, I have reported on all four states and a lot of the native issues which also impact upon our, our neighbors across the res border. And I can help with that too. Um, I'm kind of a social media goddess. I don't do much on my own because I've been so busy building up a social media network for my day job. Interest of full, full disclosure, I do run a marketing department for a museum, which kind of frees me up and, and eliminates a lot of the conflict of interest that working for, say, Peabody Coal would, would bring on. Um, also, my chapter, the Valley of the Sun Pro chapter, is has one of the SPJ's most major successes for a chapter program, and that's the Publicity Summit. And we want to help other chapters in other regions bring this, this highly successful program to their, to, to their chapters and their regions. We're bringing together reporters, PIOs, PR people, and anyone else who's interested in making those connections and getting those stories placed and in pitching their stories. And let's see, what else do I have? Um, I guess the biggest thing is that is that as a Native American, I'm a born storyteller. And that's what has been driven my passion for pretty much all my life. First writing credit was at age six, never really stopped since. Uh, just like Matt, I won all the big awards too, for everything from investigative journalism to a story about how the city of Phoenix managed to rezone a strip of land. Oh, yes, 30 seconds. Hey, this is pretty close. Uh, rezone a strip of land for arts use. It was a lot of fun. So I hope you all give me your vote. But no matter who you vote for, Region 11 is going to be in great hands. And I thank you all very much. Zaya, which is leading for us all. Thank you. That's it. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Well, Matt. Matt, are you buying? It'll be great. No matter who wins, it'll be fine.